bet horse racing on DRF Bets. We'll match your first deposit of $200. Get free expert picks and past performances, plus weekly cash back. All from Daily Racing Form, the most trusted name in horse racing. The last of 14 Breeders' Cup races in 2022 is the $6 million Breeders' Cup Classic, and it includes the horse that everyone is waiting to see. Let's look at the entries and the three to five favorite, the undefeated freak. His name, his name, his flight line, trained by John Sadler. Flavian Pratt has been aboard for all five of this cold starts. And this horse is really something to watch. Something to watch race. He's fun to watch train. And it's going to take something unforeseen for him to get beat. Because when we take a look at his most recent start in the Pacific Classic, his first start around two turns in a million dollar grade one going a mile and a quarter at Del Mar, <laughs> Flavian Pratt takes a look over his right hand shoulder and flight line is gone. A 126 buyer speed figure that's up there in the stratosphere. And he won with something left. He has trained very well since then. Flight line is going to be very tough to beat. So the question is, who can finish second to complete the exacto? We are betting on this race, aren't we? Of course we are. It's the Breeders' Cup Classic. Three to five. I guess you could take three to five if you want to make a win bet at odds on. Flight line seems like a slam dunk, even though there is no such thing. But let's talk about three horses who potentially could complete the exacta. And let's start off talking about the Travers winner, Epicenter. Epicenter has been the leader of the three-year-old division all year. And I say that even though he finished second in the Kentucky Derby, even though he finished second in the Preakness, but he has always been right there. He won the Jim Dandy, a grade two in July at Saratoga, but it was his most recent performance. Epicenter's most recent performance in the Travers in late August at Saratoga. That was the race that suggested Epicenter might be good enough to be competitive in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Maybe he's good enough to give Flightline a run for his money. I don't know about that, but this was the best race of Epicenter's career. A mile and one quarter at Saratoga, and he won by more than five lengths here at a 112 buyer speed figure. Epicenter had been hovering around the 100, 102, but boy, did he deliver in the Travers, and this guy is good. Some people think he's going to be the second favorite in the race. I'm not sure about that. He's second favorite on the morning line. The reason I'm not sure about that is because another fast horse in this race who has earned terrific numbers throughout his career is Life is Good. But Life is Good has a couple questions to answer, including a most recent start that honestly was not that impressive. And when we take a look at the Woodward Stakes, you'll see what I mean. Life is good is one to 20 in this race. Five cents on the dollar. He's supposed to win this race kind of like Flightline did in the Pacific Classic, right? But he didn't. He It was workmanlike at best. He won by a length and a quarter, kind of grinding away. This was not the best race of life is good's career. Maybe it's indicative of a horse that's beginning to tail off, but this is not the type of performance that you would go, geez, Louise, this horse could be tough to catch in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Life is good has run faster in the past. If you can forgive him for a, and a less than impressive victory last time out in the Woodward, and if you can forgive him for surrendering on the lead in the Dubai World Cup, his only previous start at a mile and one quarter, that race, by the way, was run over a deep, tiring track at Maidon. That was a mile and one quarter in 204 and four. And life is good, just could not carry his speed over that heavy track. Life is good has a lot of questions to answer. But one thing's for sure, he will give Flightline a little bit of company early in the race. And if life is good, can somehow return to his 110, 112 buyer range, I guess you could make a case that he could be a potential upsetter. I don't really think Flightline's going to get beat, but when it comes down to who's going to finish second, well, I think it's the one horse, Taba. Trained by Baffert, and boy, they tried to ruin this horse early in his career by running in the Santa Anita Derby, which he won in the second start of his career, and then throwing him to the Wolves in the Kentucky Derby. 
in career start number three. Well, it shows how strong and resolute Taba is that he was somehow able to recover from that overly ambitious campaign early this year. And he finished second in the Haskell by a head, kind of a disappointing performance at odds of two to one. But last time out in the Pennsylvania Derby at Parks, Taba returned to peak form. He's going to, he took dirt, by the way, down on the inside. He took dirt, something he has been reluctant to do in the past. He took dirt. He angled outside for the drive, and it's adios amigos. Taba wins by three lengths with a 108 buyer speed figure, the best race of his career. And this is the same race that Baffert used to prep Bayern in before he won the 2014 Breeders' Cup Classic at Santa Anita. Taba is in form. He's still lightly raced. He's only started five times. He has room to continue to improve. He's listed as the fourth choice on the morning line. I think that's about right. And Taba, in my opinion, has a, has a good chance to defeat both Epicenter and Life is Good and maybe sneak into the exacta. I'm hoping for a $10 will pay. Flight line over Taba, if that $1 exacta pays $10, I'm in. If it's less than that, it's just a pass race. It's all about flight line in the Breeders' Cup Classic. We're looking for Taba to finish second. Those numbers are 4-1 in race 11 Saturday at Keeneland.